Hey guys, Troy again, and wanted to share with you another pen that I had added to my collection. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I like both modern and vintage. I know there's not a lot of channels out there that do both, but I endeavor to do that. Why? Because it's what interests me. I do like brand new pens. I like the, the, the brand new what's happening next, but I also like old stuff. I have a great capacity to appreciate history in general, but also um, pens from our history. This one from 1918 from Conklin, made in Toledo, Ohio. This is a crescent filler. I actually have one uh, here in my collection. This is the second one that I've added, and I like the vintage. Now, Conklin, uh, in their modern incarnation through Yaffa Brands, has re-released uh, the crescent filler. I have not tried the modern crescent filler, and quite honestly, I've been reticent to do so, because number one, I know the quality that I would get with a vintage that writes very well. Uh, and with some of the, I, I can't really say bad luck, uh, but some of the quality control issues I've seen in times past with Conklin, I wasn't really up to the idea of spending the money to find out whether or not I'd actually like it. Now, Yaffa Brands, if you're watching, I am more than willing to try one out. If you want to ship me one for me to play with and talk about and feature on the channel and hopefully you can blow me away with its quality, I'd be more than willing to do so. But I've been really reticent to spend the price out of pocket to try a modern one, although it's kind of intrigued me because I kind of want to know. So I've been debating whether or not to try it, but you know, I've been leaning towards not because I can find pens like this, like I did recently at the DC Pen Show. Uh, this ancient, I can call it, I guess, ancient, because it's over a hundred years old. Let's see if I can get you a good, solid picture of that here on the camera. That's not so bad right there. And you look at the crescent, and it says Conklin. You flip it over. And that's how it looks there. You look at the clip, you can see it says Conklin and you can see it's patented 1918. One of the neat things that uh, I will say Yaffa Brands has done is in continuing the name at least of Conklin they have actually continued to try to imitate the general shape of some of the old Conklin clips on some of their older pens so at, at least they've tried to carry on that look with its namesake. But, uh, you know, this one, I can't complain whatsoever. Let me share with you a little bit of history about Conklin. And I'm going to pull it from this book right here, Antique Writing Instruments, Stuart Schneider and George Fischler. I've shared this book before on this channel. Here we go on page 19, that the Conklin Pen Company was founded by Roy Conklin in 1898 in Toledo, Ohio. They're best known for their crescent filler pens from 1901 through 1928. The crescent filler patented in 1901 and 1903 consisted of a bar inside the pen attached to a crescent that protruded outside the barrel which contained an ink sac. An ink was drawn into the pen by pushing down on the crescent. The crescent was locked in place by a knurled hard rubber band that turned freely around a groove in the barrel. Now I'm going to show you that here in great detail. The design was simple, no eyedropper necessary. It enjoyed a great success in sales. Colors were usually black or modeled red and black, which I don't have yet. Uh, and some models having silver or gold filled overlays. They were among the, the four largest pen companies until Wall took over that position in sales volume in 1924. So this would be the one that I have right here that I just showed you, the 1919 Conklin Large Crescent Filling Number 40 Black Chased Hard Rubber Gold Filled Trim. Right there, you just saw that. So, it's a little bit about Conklin. I'm gonna show you another Conklin that I had. And when I got this, I just bought it off from eBay. It is a model uh, 2NL. It's got a number two nib on it, which I'm assuming is why the number two is in there. You can see that there's no clip on it, but it's also in black chased hard rubber. And you've got the crescent here, and it's actually smaller. It's much smaller than that number 40 that I just showed you. 
So you can see it's got a smaller crescent with a smaller uh, channel right here where that lock ring goes. So this is not inked up. So what you would do is when you go to ink it, you would stick the nib in ink and you would simply press down on that crescent and there's a bar inside that depresses that sack just like a lever would do. But uh, that's how a crescent filler works. Now, since I didn't have the lock ring, I went ahead and, and ordered one from somebody I knew who thought that they had one that would work. So this is what the lock ring works well, looks like. Unfortunately, it is too big a lock ring for this particular pen. It's too wide and it's too tall to fit under that crescent, so it's not the right one for this pen. And I've been trying to find one that fits the 2NL, and I've been in contact actually with a guy who sold me this, and he's still looking to see if he's got one. Now you can see right here, that, see that there's a break in that ring, just like you see right there. So what happens is you would twist that and since that break in that ring is underneath that crescent you can successfully press it down but when you've got it locked like this where that opening is here that lock ring here I cannot press down so I can't expel any ink so that's kind of an ingenious design so that would go right here in that groove around that pen and underneath that crescent uh, if this was the proper ring for it. But considering it's not, you actually get a pretty good idea in view of what that looks like without even being on the pen. Now that number 2NL is actually a slip cap. This one is a screw cap. You pull it off and you can see you've got the grooves right there. And then you've got a nice smooth section to a flared out uh, there. And here is your Conklin nib. I can tell you Conklin made some beautifully flexible nibs. Black chased hard rubber all the way down and you can actually remove that section like you would any other lever filler and there is an ink bladder or a sack inside of here. of writing with this uh, this beauty I mean it's still physically it's in great shape I can see where it's got a little bit of wear to it uh, but it's still in really really good condition I'm actually pretty happy with it so let's go ahead and take that off and do you want to post it yeah probably so because you know it, it's not too terribly long it's it's borderline on that length you take that off um, yeah, you can probably write with it. It's probably just barely long enough for me. So let's go ahead and try it without uh, going ahead and posting that pen. But let's take a look at this flexible nib on this old Conklin. I mean, if you're looking for a good old-fashioned pen, I mean, I'm talking a good vintage pen, you may want to investigate Conklin's because the first time I wrote with that uh, 2NL that I've got over there, uh, even though the lock ring was not uh, on it, I still inked it up, played with it, and I was really really happy with it and I knew that I was going to be with this one as well. And another cool thing about this, if you look at this feed, it's a little bit different. You see how that's kind of flared in? You know, it's got a kind of an interesting shape to it. So you've got the back side of that nib, uh, which is pretty pretty normal on that nib, but look at that feed. Look how that kind of cuts in uh, almost like an hourglass figure there. So it's a little different. So let's go ahead and write with this baby and see what we got. Conklin. Number 40. Circa. What? What do we say? 1918 to 1919 era. This is a good wet pen. This is also a good flex nib. So... It's smooth when you just want to write with it this way, but if you want to get some really nice line variation, because you get that nice flex to it, let's go ahead and do a little wetness test. 
absolutely totally wet on this Rhodia pad. I've been using this pen a lot since I got it and inked it up and been playing with it. I put into it some Waterman black ink. Now it normally has a fairly wide line as it is, um, but obviously you can see you get just a little bit of line variation um, even more so when you press down on it. Let's go ahead and do reverse writing because quite honestly I bet you it does well. So. Maybe not. Ooh, I thought it would do a little bit better than that because how wet it is. But if you give it a little bit of pressure, I guess you can. If you had to. Personally, I wouldn't, though. See, so look at that. You can hear, you can definitely hear the feedback on it, but I assure you that it's actually a pretty smooth pen. You go really lightly. Look at look at how narrow and fine a line. If you just let the pen barely touch the surface of the page, but if you're normally writing, you're going to get a good ink flow. But if you just barely touch, ah, I'm loving it. I've been really happy with this so far. Uh, great pen for the price. Now when I say for the price, you're going to find these fully restored in the 300s. Uh, if you go to find a really, uh, a really decent one that's known to be in good condition and like I said has been restored by somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, so you can find these cheaper. I mean that 2NL I found well under $100 and I did the ink sack replacement on it and the cleanup on it. I just didn't have the lock ring, so that brought that price way down. Uh, but I'm still trying to find a good lock ring. <laughs> so um, once I locate one, um, then I'll have two that are that are primo and ready to go. I'll show you some, uh, hopefully I've shown you some better pictures of the up-close imprints on it. But Conklin, you know, the old Conklin, early 1900s, um, I've been very happy every time I've touched an old Conklin. I've got two lever fillers now, and uh, you know I've got the old, some old Conklin Endoras as well in my collection. So Conklin was a good quality, top tier manufacturer in the early 1900s here in America, out of Toledo, Ohio, and they're worth consideration, especially these Crescent fillers. I got to be honest, I think I like this Crescent filler better than the Endora. The Endora that I've got is a great big chunky pen. It's a lever filler, uh, but uh, quite honestly, the lever box came right out of it. I need to get that repaired. But uh, and and I, did, I like the way this wrote better than the Endora. So it's kind of hard to go wrong with a good Crescent filler from Conklin. Yeah.